salmon. This is Atlantic farm salmon, and basically I like to use a hand knife because it helps trim, it's very flexible, and it can trim in amongst the rib cage and not take away too much good flesh. So, under the gill, a little tap, the knife isn't thick enough to push, it will bend, so I use a tap of a steel or a mallet or something. Just a personal preference, it gets through the bone neatly. So I've done that both sides now, behind the fin and through, that's the head off. Then this is what's called a smoker's way of cutting a salmon. It's really the simplest way and it takes longer, but I'm in no hurry and I want the best yield I can get. And I'll show you why I like fill it in this way in a minute. Get started under the backbone on the first cut. And you're angling the knife up because I want it to click the backbone all the way up because I don't want to waste flesh. There we are. First cut. A bit of damage there from part of the production, I'd imagine. We can work around that in a minute. Then I've gone above the backbone this time, exactly the same process all the way down, under this fin, down to the tail, and through. So, no gapes. And what I'm going to do with this backbone is I'm going to take a spoon, because as much as this is as good as you can get, there's still great salmon you can get off that. By using a spoon which is blunt, you won't cut any bone off, and that accumulates in fish pie, fish cakes, you can even make tartare from that. I'll put that to one side, do that both sides. I haven't left a lot on the bone, but there's certainly a fish pie or a fish cake there, or a salmon tartare. Right, so that's that done. Back down the way. Trim it up. This is where this knife really comes in. You're taking these rib cages off, hook the knife under the rib cage, get your fingers out of the way, and because of its flexibility, it's curving with the fish and just taking out the ribs. I'm cutting down the side of the muscle on that fin. Same again, same again, off with the ribs, no waste, just the rib cage. Now, I really like to trim my salmon up so my customers get the salmon they're going to eat and not fat and gristle. So here again with a different type of knife now I'm cutting down through this fat around this fin he says around that fin along there this is the, the fin muscle we don't want to eat either and that's trimmed off. I run my finger between the skin and the flesh along the top there. Again, that's a little line of fat. You'll probably see it on supermarket fish because there's extra weight and you don't want to eat it, so you don't have to buy it. Right, the next thing is I like to trim out this white fatty bit as well. Again, you probably won't see that on supermarket fish. And this is where this knife really works. Because it hasn't got a point as such, it doesn't dig in. There we are. A little bit more trim in there. Right. Not going to salvage any of this. Next job on this. Pin boning. Get yourself a good pair of pin boning pliers worth investing in a pair like this, spring loaded, stainless steel, I've been doing this for three years here now and this is the only pair of pliers that have lasted more than a year and I think they've probably got a couple more years in them. Approximately 30 odd bones down this line, you can feel them with your finger so find the first one, often a bit buried at the top here and start pulling them out. Probably one of the easiest fish to bone. Now 
Now, when you're pulling them out, pull them in line with the grain. If you can see the grain of the flesh, it's pointing that way. If you pull that way, you're not going to tear the flesh. If you pull that way or that way, you'll tear the flesh. They'll act like a, uh, a wire on a cheese cutter, and they'll literally cut through. Right, bring the hands off, just wipe the fish down. There we are. One salmon fillet. Do a bit more trim it actually. Bring that off. Bring that off. A little bit of residue there. One salmon fillet for the counter.